Now let's talk about Korea and wrap up the show today where they are testing missiles. Three so far in January. The first two they say are hypersonic missile tests. The third they say were two short range ballistic missiles fired from a train. I am very skeptical that they fired two hypersonic missiles. Now, you know, hypersonic could be a loose definition, right? It's not like the 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 missile is anything that special it just goes faster than like a traditional ballistic missile and things like that. Now they also have hypersonic missiles with gliders that are supposed to be able to uh, travel like a cruise missile at high speed and all this kind of stuff. And I'm very skeptical that North Korea has like hypersonic missile technology. And my guess is that really what they're, I would assume focusing on is just having enough ballistic missiles that they could fire them at the you know US or US territories to provide an effective deterrent and actually aren't that concerned about developing like high tech uh hypersonic missiles in like the way maybe Russia or China uh is doing but I could be wrong about that but that's my strong guess on it is that North Korea is more looking at just having a deterrent and not uh, the most advanced uh, nuclear program that there is. The rail fired missiles uh, sound like something that North Korea has been working on for a long time. They're just short range ballistic missiles, uh, but firing them from a train, I guess, would give North Korea the ability uh, to have, you know, missiles that were hard to hit or take out by the United States because they got a lot of rail line. Um so, yeah, so all those are going on, of course. Uh, just before the test happened, a South Korean President Moon Jae-in uh, was saying that he had effective agreements with the United States on ending the Korean War, that he had, uh, in principle, reached agreements with China, China and North Korea on ending the Korean War that was going to make a real push for that before he left office in the coming months. Now, in one sense, uh, you know, North Korea, I guess they probably generate the most affected thoughts after they've, hit, you know, had missile tests. If they don't test missiles, the United States and everybody completely forgets about them. And so anytime uh, North Korea or anybody proposes thoughts, the U.S. says, well, if North Korea denuclearizes, we'll engage in thoughts, which is a complete non starter, right? North Korea is never going to do that. And so maybe this is North Korea's backwards way. Uh, doesn't, you know, mainly seem like like the way I would, you know, necessarily suggest going about, but a way North Korea is trying to generate um, some attention from, you know, actors within the United States in order to engage in affected talks where the United States is willing to make the concessions needed to actually get a deal done. This could also be North Korea just trying to like say we're not interested in talks, I, I suppose, as well. Uh, that that certainly seems to be more the way the U.S. media is portraying it, that this is uh, Kim Jong-un's way of rejecting talks with the United States overall. Now, one of the tests, I believe it was the second hypersonic test, so the, the middle test overall, uh, for whatever reason, triggered the U.S. early warning system. And so apparently uh, the U uh, initial computer test, for whatever reason, thought the missile could strike as far as California or the Aleutian Islands. And flights were halted, I, I believe, just for a few minutes uh, on the U.S. West Coast because of, of this missile test. And so, you know, interesting why it actually does affect the lives of Americans a little bit. Uh, after the second hypersonic test, the U.S. announced sanctions on five North Koreans and then I believe one entity that was maybe in part Russian um, and was also trying to impose new sanctions on North Korea at the U.N. Security Council. Doesn't seem like the U.S. will make it very far there. My and my guess is that neither China nor Russia really have any interest in allowing new sanctions against North Korea. But you never know if uh, they're really working on maybe some advanced hypersonic missions, uh, missiles, or something. China or Russia could find that um, uh, kind of aggressive or too much and, and look to you know constrain North Korea a little bit by agreeing to sanctions. Although. Again, I think it, it, it's very unlikely. North Korea responded by saying that the sanctions were profoundly uh, destabilizing and then, uh, you know, made some threats uh, um, along the lines of, you know, we, we would do more things if the United States, uh, you know, continues to try to impose sanctions. 
some people I think were interpreting that the the two missiles launched from the train were a response to the sanctions. I'm not sure about that. It could just be a, a you know round of missile tests. Uh, also important, you know, nobody ever thinks about this with North Korea, or especially not in the U.S. mainstream media. But there also are North Korean internal politics. You know, the the Kim family, Kim Jong Un, his sister, had to maintain their their grip and control over power. There's a lot of factors to balance here. The people are desperately poor and starving. Uh, and then also, you know, there, there's a, a ruling class in North Korea that extends beyond the Kim family. And so, you know, maybe part of this was like appeasing the military leadership or trying to, you know, show strength to the Korean people or something like that. Some, you know, they claim that they're testing these hypersonic missiles. Well, then Kim could be like, look, we have more advanced missiles than the United States has. This is what, you know, you guys have been sacrificing for all this time. And, and so they're, it could be more internal Korean politics than we like to realize, uh, but at the same time, uh, based on the the relation uh, in time to Moon Jae In's like announcements on potential agreements to end the Korean War, uh, this seems like it has more to do with that. And again, it could be you know Korea, nor the North Koreans trying to find a good strong position to enter talks with, where they feel like the Americans will have to take them seriously and uh, negotiate, and not just come in with non-starters like denuclearize, and then we'll consider lifting sanctions or it could be a North Korean rejection of TOTS altogether. So interesting what, what's happening with these missile tests, but largely North Korea has not been in discussion for the entire first year of the Biden administration. And so uh, these tests are, you know, putting North Korea back on the uh, political map in the United States. And I expect that to continue in 2022.